everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffey. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 55. Now, last episode, we made ourselves a Wrath Cage using Thorncraft from the mod Forbidden Magic, as well as getting ourselves a zombie imprinted crystal and a Diabolist's Fork. And today, I'm going to kind of show you why in the world I even bothered making that when we have ourselves this guy over here, which is producing more than enough mobs for us to be satisfied pretty much for a really long time. Now, to start with, I've done a bunch of rearranging since the end of last episode. If we go down into our, what used to be our power room, it is now not our power room. It is now uh, what is just a random room. It's going to have, I'm going to leave this down here just because it's going to be a pain to try and move this. Uh, all the redstone and all of the stuff that we have set up here uh, is going to stay. This we will get to in just a second. But first, I would like to show you where I've moved everything. And personally, I think it looks a little bit better over here. We now have both of our turbines and just a little bit of missing spruce up there. Do we have any? We do. Let me just quickly fix that up real quick. There we go. Uh, so we got both of our turbines. This happened to fit quite nicely. They're still the exact, the exact same dimensions. Uh, I changed them both to only have one ring of endorium and then used the extra endorium to make a bunch of tesseracts. You will notice that now everything is being sent and received via tesseracts. So all of the water going uh, into the turbines, uh, sorry, into the reactor from the turbines, and then all of the steam coming from the reactor into the turbines is all being done via tesseracts. You'll notice that instead of having two big reactors, we now have one slightly bigger reactor. This is a five by five by I think it's seven. You can see it now has uh, two of those fuel rods in the middle, and it is more than happily producing the 1,080 millibuckets per tick that both of these turbines are using combined because they're both using uh, 540 millibuckets per tick each, producing the same 5,000 redstone flux per tick. So I think this is a little bit of a better system. Everything looks a lot cleaner. Uh, we also have our power core from Draconic Evolution down here. It's not quite set up. It's not actually receiving any power from this yet, but I will do that at some point uh, in the future. I kind of like this little like glass floor that we've got with the car underneath it. I think it looks kind of cool, but then again, uh, I built it, so maybe that's just me being uh, a bit biased in that in that respect. But uh, what I want to do today is I want to go ahead and work on something from Blood Magic. And what I want to work on is getting infinite blood, because right now, if we want to go ahead and get ourselves some blood into our blood network and into our blood altar, in order to do stuff, we actually have to go ahead and like stand here. We have to go turn on the village spawner, wait for the villagers to move over here. We then have to kill the villagers with our sacrificial dagger, and then just wait for it to fill up and kind of stand here being like uh, for days and days and days until we get enough blood and as we progress further into blood magic that becomes more and more of a, of a pain as we need more and more blood so what we're going to do today is we are going to tackle the problem of getting infinite blood and the way we're going to do that is with a ritual from blood magic called the well of suffering ritual which allows us to kill mobs and then use that killing of mobs it kills them automatically by the way uh, and use that automatic killing of mobs to harvest blood and then send that blood into the blood altar and therefore into our blood network so the first thing I'm going to do today, and this is also, by the way, linking to why we have the Wrath Cage. We are going to use that for our mobs. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take this down, which uh, should only take us like three and a half seconds because our new diamond drill is like the world's fastest diamond drill. So we'll go ahead and just grab every single one of those. Thank you very much. You'll see they did go ahead and deactivate all of them. We now have 24. For the Well of Suffering Ritual, we do need 36. So we are going to need a few more of those. And also, what we're going to have to do is previously, we used this guy over here. The Ritual of the... Well, the Ritual Rod is the, the item that we used. But this current Ritual Rod cannot do... At dusk runes. If you see there, it says in the whaler, it says cannot place dusk runes. And as I found out the hard way by spending like 20 minutes in a single player world testing this out, uh, dusk runes are required for the Well of Suffering ritual. So we're going to have to move up one to the next ritual diviner, which is this guy over here, simply requiring the normal ritual diviner, as well as two elemental inscriptions of dusk, which are made by putting a block of coal into the blood altar, and also two of these demonic slates, which are just an advancement on the imbued slates, the reinforced slates the blank slate uh, basically for tier four this is just by putting a tier three slate into a tier four blood altar and giving it 15,000 life points so what i'm going to start with guys here is i'm going to go away i'm going to make two of these two of these i'm also going to go away and make uh, 12 more of these ritual stones so that we have enough ritual stones to get the well of suffering ritual up and running and i'll be back in a second once we have everything ready to go okay so once we got ourselves that second diabolist slate is no nope 
Demonic Slate. They sound so similar. Once we got ourselves to the second Demonic Slate there, we can go ahead and throw you there, there, throw both of these here and here, along with our original uh, Ritual Thingamajiggy over here. We get ourselves an upgraded Ritual Diviner, and then if we combine that with our 36 Ritual Stones and our Master Ritual Stone as well, we should be able to set up something pretty cool. So... First of all, we should probably also work on uh, the, the creeper issue in here, which is uh, an ever-growing concern. Let's just... There we go. Okay. Do we have some mob? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Do we have any torches? We should have some torches lying around. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. I told you. I think we have mob griefing off, so that shouldn't have blown anything up. It didn't. But still, we could do with lighting this place up so we don't lose some stuff later on down the line. Uh, so we're going to start by throwing this guy in the middle, like so. Uh, you can see these little three lines that I put here. This is just to indicate how tall this ritual is going to be. We can actually go ahead and get rid of all of these. Like so, I'm being careful to destroy everything that we touch because this axe is so flippin' strong. There we go. And then, if we go ahead and get rid of these as well, we should be able to set our Ritual Diviner to the Well of Suffering just by shift right clicking. And I think it's just after Ritual of Speed. Oh, there we go. Ritual, yeah, there we go. Well of Suffering. And then if we take this and just simply right click on the Master Ritual Stone, you will see that it is draining life points from our network, which we currently don't have many of. So let's just quickly throw you in there and kill a couple of these guys. That should allow us to, uh, to go ahead and do this without taking so much damage. There we go. And we'll just kind of hold that down. And it should go ahead and fill in the whole area here. Oh, like so. There we go. And this is what the full ritual of Sacrifice looks like. Now, like I said earlier, basically what this does is going to kill any mobs within the uh, immediate vicinity. So it should kill any mobs that spawn in here, I think. Think. I don't think this is too far away. And then it deposits all the blood that it gets from those mobs into the blood altar, into a nearby blood altar. In this case, the one directly above the master the master ritual stone, which is kind of just above that, that sound muffler over there. Now, in order to actually get this thing up and running, we do, of course, need to activate the ritual. And to do that, we do require 50,000 life points in our blood network. Now, currently, if we grab our division sigil, we have 7,000. So not miles off, but we are pretty far off. We have 7,000. And that should start to let it climb up. And we do need to wait for that to get to 50,000. So I am going to have to cut away at some point and fill that out to 50,000 before we can activate the ritual. But before we even do that, I would like to set up the Wrath Cage and get this thing all up and running. So... The way the Wrath Cage works is if we go ahead and throw this guy down, I think I showed this off uh, at the end of last episode, the very end. We're going to put you, this Wrath Cage, we're not going to put it there. We're going to put it like up a block or two. We're going to put it there. Now, the reason I've put it there and the reason why we have ME Cable running underneath the floor all the way down from our Thorncraft room to here. And by the way, this this is connected up to our Thorncraft network, our sub-network uh, for Applied Thor... Now, we're going to call it a thi <laughs> I was going to call it uh, Applied Thormagistics there, but it's not. It's uh, Thormic Energistics. Uh, the reason we have it hooked up to that one is because what we're going to do to start with here is we're going to send aspects directly from our Essential Terminal here down and towards a jar that's going to import them into the Wrath Cage. So if we were to go ahead and quickly throw in our zombie crystal like so basically telling this thing that we want to spawn zombies uh, and we were to grab ourselves our goggles of revealing again real quick we should be able to see that this thing requires currently requires corpus now corpus is found you guessed it, in Zombie Brain. Look at that. It's got two Corpus and one Humanus. And seeing as we have a pretty much near infinite number of, uh, of Zombie Brains at our disposal, they're all constantly coming in through our mob farm over here. What we're going to do is I'm going to set up two new Xbox buses over here to keep this guy here, the Alchemical Furnace, filled up with coal and Zombie Brains so that this guy is constantly putting Corpus into our A network, our Thormic Energistics network over here. And then what we're going to do all the way down here on the bottom floor is we are going to stick an Essentia Xbox bus. Essentia Xbox bus. I'm just going to type in Xbox bus because it's probably going to be easier. We're going to make an Essentia Xbox bus and stick that right down here onto a water jar that is then going to fill up with coppers that we can then send into our wrath cage, which should keep it constantly filled up with the coppers it needs to spawn more zombies. That's the plan. Whether or not it's going to work is a different question. I don't know how fast it's going to be either, although for now, it doesn't actually need to be that fast. So the first thing we need to do is make ourselves two normal export buses, and we should start by being in the AE system itself. Thankfully, we have the formation core. For some reason, we never have any pistons. You know what? I'm just going to make a one. <laughs> I was going to say I'm going to make a stack, but uh, we didn't have enough stuff to make a stack. Let's go ahead and like request uh, 200 oak planks there real quick. 
And we should actually be able to go ahead and just make like a nice little backlog of pistons there. 12 is, is close enough for me. We'll go ahead and take that. I had a feeling that we wouldn't have enough formation cores to finish the job. So instead, we are going to have to request a circuit. Uh, or just go ahead and do something like this. This should really be working. I'm not quite sure why it's not. I think we're having some issues with channels. We've got channels going all over the place now. Uh, I really just like sort this out and get a central uh, ME core that's like probably somewhere that's not here uh, and get it a bit more organized. But for now, this will work fine. We'll go ahead and we'll grab this guy who should now be back in here. Who is not? That's because it's now called a processor. And there we go. We'll take this guy. Boom. Boom. We'll go ahead and grab another one of you. And to start with, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some coal. And we're going to make sure that the alchemical furnace is constantly filled up with stuff. So it's con this guy is like constantly working, making sure everything is good. Now, uh, that doesn't mean we have to run ME cable from this ME network to this ME sub-network. Thankfully, we do have some dense and, uh, ME conduits going from the network over around to here. The reason we have these set up is because we have a few machines over here and over there that require a lot of uh, ME channels. And we also have the uh, the barrels on the roof from the tree farm, which are also using a bunch of ME channels as well, which is why I replaced most of these with the dense ME conduits from... Uh, from Android IO, but that's not neither here nor there. The only thing that we need to worry about is, first of all, getting rid of this. And second of all, doing something like this. Now, we have to make sure he doesn't fall. <laughs> that's kind of essential. And what we need to do is we need to grab some ME conduits and a cable. And there is a difference. These are ME conduits. These are ME cable. They do the same thing, but uh, one of them we can cover up nicely with conduits like that. And the other one we can't. So I'm not quite sure what happens there when you connect two up like that. Can I disconnect those? I can. Uh, I don't know. That's connecting the main network to the sub-network, which is not what I want. I don't want that to happen. Uh, I think that might just actually break stuff. So instead, what I'm going to do is put that there. And at the same time, I don't want that to connect up either. So let's disconnect that. That should be fine. And actually, I guess in hindsight, we don't really need that. And then we'll just go ahead and stick you down like so. Tell you to export coal. This should go blue any second now and start filling up with coal. We're going to stick an export bus right there as well in a second. If this decides to go blue, there we go. Nice. Okay, well, that, that's good. I was getting worried a bit there. But we'll put you there. Uh, again, we'll go ahead and disconnect everything because we only want it going up to the uh, the alchemical furnace here. And then we'll just go ahead and throw down an ME export bus and another ME conduit right there. And again, just go ahead and disconnect that one. Uh, it's okay with connecting to here because it's all part of the same network. And in here, we're just going to say constantly export zombie brains. Actually, that's not okay. <laughs> that is not at all okay. Could you... Okay. I think for that one, because that's not actually an ME conduit, that... Ooh, have you... Why? Why? Are we out of Yolorium? Did we... Did we run out? No, we're not out of Yolorium. Why? Why have you stopped? <laughs> is my question. Where is the power going? I think what's happened there is because we hooked these up, it's turned off. Is that what happened? Yeah, okay. So I think, yeah, okay. What we need to do is we need to grab a cover and a simple way to just block normal conduits from connecting because unlike the Ender IO conduits, you, uh, you can't just stop normal conduits from connecting to other surfaces. All you have to do is just throw down a cover and that's the one cover. These ones are from Thermal Dynamics, I'm guessing. Yeah. You don't want the Thermal Dynamics covers. You want the uh, simple Forge Microblock covers, uh, which are these ones up here, Forge Microblocks. The ones you make with a saw are the ones from Forge Microblocks. And if we just do that, that should stop that from connecting up. And we should be able to do something like this. And then, if we go ahead and look in here, after putting this back down to make sure this little guy doesn't fall through into the floor. There we go. It's filling up with zombie brains. And this guy should constantly be dumping those into this little network here. And everything should be good. Now, I didn't want to do that. Let's have a look. We have... Corpus? Yeah, we got 163 Corpus. Wow. Okay, so we got a good head start going. Uh, you can see why here that I didn't want to connect up the uh, the two networks. If you have too many things, if you have two controllers set up in one network uh, that are not touching each other, like right now we have two controllers over here, but they form one multi-block. Uh, if I show you like, like that, we have two controllers there forming one multi-block. Whereas if we have two controllers in separate locations, like we had a second ago, we had these two and then we had one over here being connected by the conduit touching there. Uh, the system just shuts down because you can't have more than one 
uh, controller in one network. You can have it in some networks, but not in one network. I think you get what I'm on about there. Uh, anyway, so this is now going ahead and producing unlimited amounts of stuff down there. The last thing we have to do is make an Essentia export bus, which I have a feeling is going to be a little bit harder. It's just a... Oh, it's actually not too bad. It's a Colosseans... Colosseans? Col Colosseans? Col <laughs> I'm not too sure. We'll take this guy, and what else do we need? We need to get ourselves a filtered Essentia tube, which we might have we do good stuff i'll take that uh, i think we made a few of these back when we did thermic energistics we then need two water jars which we definitely have after we took all the jars down two iron we definitely have and then some quick silver drops and an auto shard all of that we definitely have let's have a look here auto shards we got 604 of them uh, we only need the one and then quick silver we also have a ton of so i'll take all of you this i believe has to be done in one of these so we'll go boom boom and boom Get ourselves the uh, the core there, and then we'll go boom. And unfortunately, we can't shift click here. That's a bit of a shame. But I think our water jars. Uh, I'm actually in the normal A system, so we'll grab two of those, throw them in like so, as well as two iron and our filtered essentia tube. And voila, we got ourselves an essentia export bus. And finally, if we just grab ourselves, actually, I wonder if we can. I wonder if we can just export directly into the um, the cage here. Because my plan was to put a jar here and then put an Essentia tube between the jars. But I wonder if we can just do this. I'm not too sure if that's going to work. But it would be cool if it did. And then how do we specify which Essentia we want to export? That's a good question. Do we use like a jar? We hmm. Hmm. Don, do we need a vial? That one makes sense. Vile. Uh, they're not called vials. Uh, let's have a look. We're typing corpus. We need to get ourselves, I think, a, a vial, but spelt with a PH. We need to get ourselves a file? Vial? I think it's pronounced vial. We need to get ourselves a vial, which is just glass and clay. Actually, wow, that's really easy. Uh, it's really easy if you have to have some clay. All right. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to try and find some clay because this is going to take a while. Uh, I'll then come back. I'll then sit by the blood altar for a while, filling up my uh, my life point network until we have 50,000 blood points. I'll be back in a second. And again, a little while later, we now have 50,000 life points in our little blood orb. So uh, I can also confirm that the vial thing worked, by the way. Basically, all you have to do to fill up a vial, I think we can actually empty them out in here as well. If I put that back, does that empty it out? It does. So if you put an empty vial in here and you just select the, uh, the aspect you want to get out you can stick, stick, like just click it it gives you eight of that aspect and then if you go to the export bus all the way down here uh, i think i can just go ahead and clear that and then if you just click click and it's there so now it's going to export corpus let's quickly go ahead and grab our uh, weak activation crystal this guy over here and we should be able to do this a rush of energy thrust flows through the ritual and now if we look at the top oh yeah look at this it's got a pretty cool animation. It's actually, I believe, killing the villager here. Because uh, nothing else is. It's killing the villager. And if we have a look in our little um, network here, you can see our life points are going up. Now, let's go check real quick. Uh, it's actually, wow, it's actually killing all of the villagers already. Uh, you can see we're not doing anything. The villagers are all taking damage. We are still getting life points. Wow. They all died. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a thing. So now all we have to do is go ahead and hook this up. That should start to spawn zombies pretty much instantly. If this works, which I'm really hoping it does. That, oh, there we go. Come on. I see zero. Work with me. I heard a straight villager is getting taken over. Um, okay, that doesn't seem to want to work, so instead, let's try go ourselves a water jar uh, and see if this thing works. It might not, I didn't, I didn't know if it would work, because I know Thorn Kinergistics is fairly, I don't, it's not fairly new, but it's fairly limited to Thorncraft itself. So let's try something like this. If we put you there, and then say I put a water jar there. And there we go. That's filling up with coppers already. Nice. Okay. All we need now, then, is, I guess, a Essentia tube, which we may or may not have. We do. We have four of them. Nice. We'll take that, and then we'll just go boom. Uh, not like that. <laughs> we'll just go boom, boom, and that. There we go. Look at that. It's filling up in there. 
Hopefully they won't spawn. Oh, look at that. Zombies, zombies, zombies. <laughs> Hopefully they won't spawn outside of the bounds here. But you can see that they are already taking damage. They'll go red every few seconds. And if we go ahead and right-click here, you can see that our life points are actually going up, despite the fact that we are doing absolutely nothing. We are getting free blood points right now. And also, thanks to the fact that we used a wrath cage, we don't even have to be here. Uh, all we have to do is simply grab a lever which we don't have. If we head back up to the surface, all we have to do is make a lever. So we need a stick, which we probably don't have. No, we never have sticks. Let's request 100 sticks. There we go. All we need is sticks and cobble, and we should be able to make a lever. And then all we have to do then is stick that lever onto the wrath cage, and we can turn it on and off whenever we like. It's pretty awesome. And as long as it's on, we don't even have to be near for this thing to actually start to work. Now, uh, the way that this works, I'm just going to stick it there. I can, I can turn it off to show you how this works. The way that the, uh, the the ritual works is, I believe it costs two life points per uh, each like hit it does. So it costs us life points for each hit that it does, but it also gives us ten life points back for each successful hit that it gets on an enemy. So we're actually making like a net profit of eight life points every time it happens. So we are essentially making three life points. You can see it stopped spawning zombies now. Uh, all we have to do is go ahead and flick that back on. We are getting a bunch of zombie brains being dropped by our AE system. So. What I'm thinking we might do as well is go ahead and pick those up into, say, a vacuum hopper and then have that, but like, circle background up to the system, which should at least kind of mitigate the amount of zombie brains that we're using. Because right now, actually, though, to be fair, I don't think we're ever going to run out anywhere. We could probably get away with uh, grabbing a vacuum hopper and making a trash can and just straight away throwing, off, like, straight throwing away all of the zombie brains that are being made by the um, by the ritual downstairs. Because in all fairness, I don't see us. Uh, actually running into any uh, zombie brain related lack of lack of what <laughs> i don't see us running into any lack of zombie brain related issues uh, anytime soon so for now i'm gonna go ahead and make a trash can and just kind of save on server lag to make sure it doesn't just like lag to death like it was doing in last episode uh, i'm gonna go ahead and make sure that all of this uh, all of the zombie brains and stuff are being instantly canned so i'll put you there put you there that shouldn't hook up with anything else we'll just make the top and output for items and that should go ahead and just trash everything instantly you can see it's not quite reaching all of these brains uh, i don't quite think it can reach that far although it's it's getting there no it can't, it can't quite reach the corners but it can reach it can reach most of the place. It's going to clear out most of the zombie brains and most of the stuff that's left on the floor. And I guess with that, guys, I'm going to end today's episode there. We now have a fully functional uh, infinite source of blood, which is pretty awesome. We can now do all kinds of cool stuff, uh, including using some of the blood magic tools, which rely on your network having blood, because we now have an infinite source of blood in our network. We can just leave that up there, and we have blood in our network constantly. Uh, we can upgrade this so we can do more stuff. If we uh, use runes of sacrifice uh, and put those in our altar here... They're going to increase the amount of life points we get from every single kill by 10% for each rune of sacrifice that we have. So one thing we might look into, and one thing we should probably actually do just in general, uh, is start to replace some of these normal blood runes with different runes from blood magic. I'm thinking some speed runes to make the rituals a bit faster. Uh, also some runes of sacrifice so that we get more blood for each zombie that we kill or each hit that we put on a zombie down here. This seems to be doing fine in terms of the amount of zombies that it's spawning. Uh, it's not spawning a ton of them, but it's spawning like enough to make sure that we constantly have zombies down there. And I think the only the other problem we might have is if this guy down here is not actually like moving things fast enough but for now it looks like we are actually still gaining coppers uh, as a whole we do have to worry about like uh, the coppers thing filling up in here as well which could happen but we do have 1224 bytes spare in this disc we have like about 500 bytes spare in all these discs so i don't think we're gonna hit the limit on coppers anytime soon then again if we're constantly doing uh, like burning up these zombie brains it might happen quicker than you think but for now guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to like it does help out a lot and i will see you guys next time